Artificial intelligence is working its way into more and more sectors of our economy, and the challenge for Canada will be to turn that high-tech trend into our competitive advantage. The Vector Institute in Toronto has seen a lot of interest in this growing field. Now here to talk about how AI fits in with Canada's plans, Ed Clark, chair of the Vector Institute and, of course, also the former CEO of TD Bank. Good to see you again, Ed. Great, great to be on air again. So let's talk about your work at the Vector Institute and the recognition that artificial intelligence is moving fast, is transforming industries and sectors. Is Canada ready? Are we taking proper advantage of this trend? Yeah, I think so. I would say, you know, my, my message, you know, we start at the Vector Institute and you start with an idea. And sometimes these ideas work and sometimes they don't so work. This is a case where they exceeded our expectations dramatically, both in what we've been able to accomplish and how fast we've been able to accomplish. So that's the good news story. Uh, the worrying story, or the thing you have to be concerned about, is the rest of the world woke up. So Canada was the first nation to have an AI strategy. Now there are 20 nations having an AI strategy, and they're pumping huge resources in it. So I think Canada has to pause and say, well, we have to keep on going here. We have to keep our commitment and particularly, we've got to figure out not just how to have great researchers in AI, but how to make sure we are applying AI in our companies and our public institutions to really take advantage of this new technology. How, what uh, avenues do we use to tap the resources that we need as well? Because we know at the provincial level in Ontario, we know at the federal level, uh, we have some deficits that people are concerned about. Do we have to find some enticements to make sure the private sector puts money into this to grow it for this nation? Well, one of the great news, uh, great parts of the vector development was really it was a provincial government, the federal government, and the private sector, basically in equal portions, came together to help fund vector. So it's really unique and it's seen around the world as a unique institution that the private sector stepped up and said, we know that AI will be a key determinant of economic future of Canada and we have to play to make sure that it is. And, and therefore, they put up real dollars, match the sense of what Ontario and the federal government had done. Now, so the, we've had the commitment from the sponsors. Now, one of the big stories of the year, Ed, of course, has been Amazon and whether or not they would set up the second headquarters in Toronto. Of course, we didn't get it. Uh, and depending on who I talked to, either that was the worst thing in the world or the best thing in the world. How does the Vector Institute, and I, guess, I guess the idea that it was the best thing in the world is that, okay, our top tech talent will now grow our own industries right here in Canada. Yeah, so if I just comment, then I can relate it to Vector. So as you know, our view was that, that Amazon should, should come for what we had. In the sense, there was a summary of the bids for Amazon, and beside Toronto, they said, what did Toronto offer? Canada. And I think that summarized, that was our bid. We're not going to subsidize you. We're not going to give you tax breaks. We're not going to bribe you. If, if you are a sensible person, you will come to Canada. And that's what we're getting, is dozens and dozens of firms doing that. You know, in the end, they went to places like New York and to, and to Washington, who've offered billions of dollars in subsidies. That's not a game I think we should get into because we're winning the real game. So if you take a look at the IT jobs being created, no city in the United States is match, anywhere close to matching the kind of addition to jobs and how we're gaining people more than we're exporting. We used to have a problem of a brain drain. We'd educate our kids, and then they'd go south. Now, the rest of the world is coming to, coming to us. So it's a great story. We don't need Amazon to have a great IT center here. Now, one of the most intriguing and obviously politically fraught technology stories right now is Huawei, and not just the arrest of their CFO on Canadian soil, which obviously has caused a lot of problems for Canada, uh, but the fact that even before that, there was a lot of question about Huawei's technology in terms of being able to spy on the Western world. Uh, how tough of a position does this put Canada's tech sector in? Because it didn't feel like we were quite as suspect of Huawei's technology before all this. Well, I know at Vector, Huawei isn't a, isn't a sponsor of Vector, so I think we have been careful in this to see how all this plays out. And I think to understand, I think there are lots of issues. I don't think we should round the corner that, you know, AI has tremendous potential to make people better off.
but there are also real issues that you have to worry about. And I think one of the great advantages is now by having among the best scientists in the world in AI in Canada, we can develop Canadian policies that say we really actually do understand this stuff. What's the right policy to look after Canadians? Now, Ed, you've worn so many hats during your career. I want to ask you to sort of think back to the time when you were running one of Canada's biggest banks. And then, through that lens, uh, the current uh, crisis we're seeing in Alberta when it comes to pipelines and oil. Uh, as you step back and you take a look at it through your experience, are we doing the right things in Canada? It seems that we're pretty divided on this issue and Alberta's feeling pretty alienated. Yeah, I feel, you know, to be honest, I feel quite badly about it. I was always a big and vocal advocate of taking the pipeline east. Clearly, technically, that was the easiest thing to do. It could be done the fastest, cheapest. And I think it's a shame we didn't go east. But I do think as Canadians, we have to sit there and say, these are Canadian resources, and we have to figure out how to unlock them. And I think, you know, if that means that we end up having to build the pipeline ourselves to the west coast, let's build it to the west coast. I, I do think in the end we owe it, not, it's not just to Alberta, to ourselves, that we have a tremendous resource there. It's been a source of great wealth to us, can still be a source of great wealth, and we ought to be full backers of figuring out how to solve that problem. One of your more recent roles as well as I go through your CV here, basically you were an advisor to Premier Kathleen Wynne, the former Liberal government in Ontario. Obviously marijuana was a big part of the, the government's strategy and we're still going ahead with legalization. I, I think you heard some of the interview I just had with the mayor of Markham and not allowing marijuana in that community. As you take a look at how it's evolving and rolling out in Ontario, uh, do these new plans make sense to you? There's a bit of a different, uh, I guess, uh, game plan under the Liberal government. Well, I think I would say modified, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not unhappy with how it's modified, but if you say at its core that the central supplier should be an online supplier that happens to be owned by the government and that can make sure you can either supply retailers as a wholesaler or direct to the consumer. I think realistically, as you introduce this, you're going to learn a lot of things. You know, this is a brand new product. There's still a lot of things we have to learn about this product and make sure that it's safe. And so I think the easiest way to, to have launched it is the way the, the previous government was going to launch it and the current government is launching it, is with an online offering. And I think that means that you can then move ahead and then how you roll out retail stores, you can learn as you understand the product better. All right, Ed, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Take care. That was Ed Clark, the chair of the Vector Institute, and of course, the former CEO of TD Bank.